India's Kaveri engine, a major response to critics. Born in 1986, spanning decades of trials and innovation. In 1986, India's DRDO and GTRE launched the Kaveri project with the vision, develop an indigenous engine for the HAL Tejas light combat aircraft. This wasn't just about an engine, it was about achieving strategic autonomy in this complex technology. The Kaveri project marked India's bold entry into an exclusive club. Only a handful of nations, the US, Russia, UK and France, had developed modern military turbofan engines. China struggled. For India, this declared intent to join aerospace superpowers. But the journey proved far more challenging than anticipated. By 2008, after two decades, the Kaveri engine was delinked from the Tejas program. It failed to meet critical thrust and weight specifications demanded by the fighter. This setback defined India's approach to indigenous defense technology for years. Developing a modern jet engine is staggeringly complex, and the Kaveri project faced every major challenge. The engine struggled with excessive weight. Early prototypes weighed 1,235 kilograms against a target of 1,100 kilograms. For fighter aircraft, every kilogram matters, impacting fuel efficiency and maneuverability. Weight was one issue. Metallurgy limitations posed perhaps the greatest challenge. Modern jet engines operate in extreme conditions. Turbine blades must withstand temperatures exceeding 1,600 degrees Celsius while spinning at thousands of RPM. This material science requires decades of knowledge and capability. India's situation worsened after the 1998 nuclear tests. International sanctions severely restricted access to advanced turbine blade technology and specialized materials. What had been a difficult engineering challenge became a near-impossible task of developing cutting-edge metallurgy from scratch while isolated from global supply chains. Testing was equally tough. Without domestic high-altitude testing platforms, GTRE had to rely on Russian facilities for crucial flight trials. This dependency added layers of complexity, cost and delays to an already stretched program. Every test cycle required international coordination, shipping engines across continents, and working within foreign testing schedules. Performance gaps were significant. Prototype engines achieved dry thrust of 49 kN against a target of approximately 51 kN. More critically, afterburner thrust reached 70 kN compared to the design requirement of 81 kN. These weren't minor shortfalls. They represented fundamental limitations that would affect the Tejas fighter's operational capabilities. By 2016, the financial reality of the Kaveri program was undeniable. Nearly 3,000 crore rupees had been invested domestically, while India spent over 50,000 crore rupees on imported engines for its various aircraft programs. Critics began questioning whether Kaveri represented true innovation or simply an expensive lesson in overambition. The criticism wasn't entirely unfair. Analysts pointed to overly optimistic timelines, changing specifications, and inconsistent program leadership. The project suffered from underestimating complexity while overestimating indigenous capabilities. Defense experts argued the goals were overly ambitious, with complexities underestimated. The program attempted to leap from limited gas turbine experience directly to cutting-edge military turbofan technology, a jump even established nation's approach with extreme caution. However, dismissing Kaveri as a failed project misses a crucial strategic perspective. These investments built vital indigenous capabilities in avionics, metallurgy, and testing infrastructure. India gained engine testing facilities, superalloy production, and engineers with hands-on turbofan experience. The question isn't whether Kaveri failed, but whether it created the foundation for future success. The broader context matters. Every major aerospace nation faced similar challenges in engine development. The US F-35 program faced years of delays and cost overruns. China's WS-15 engine took decades. Russia's programs faced sanctions. Engine development is inherently risky, expensive, and time-consuming. Instead of abandoning Kaveri entirely, GTRE made a strategic pivot crucial for India's aerospace. Between 2021 and 2024, focus shifted from the original Tejas application to more achievable near-term goals. 
a dry thrust variant for the UCAV Gatak, and a marine turbine, KMGT, for naval ship applications. This redeployment strategy showed mature program management. Instead of chasing specifications beyond current capabilities, GTRE identified applications where existing Kaveri tech offered immediate value. The dry thrust variant, producing 49 to 51 kilonewtons, was suited for unmanned applications where weight was less critical. The marine variant opened new possibilities. Naval turbines differ from aircraft engines. The KMGT could provide India with indigenous propulsion for naval vessels, reducing dependence on foreign suppliers in a critical defense sector. December 2024 saw a key milestone. The dry engine variant cleared in-flight testing protocols. By late 2024, flight trials began in Russia on the IL-76 testbed. As of May 2025, 25 hours of additional flight testing remained, nearing operational validation. These developments showed more than technical progress. They demonstrated institutional learning. GTRE had evolved from chasing impossible deadlines to managing realistic milestones while building toward larger goals. Social media campaigns like Hash Fund Kavri Engine reflect a shift in how India's defense tech is seen. Grassroots efforts by enthusiasts, engineers, and analysts gain traction, calling for renewed investment in aero engine capabilities. This social media movement is unprecedented public engagement with technical military programs. Users share technical analyses, compare India's development internationally, and argue for indigenous propulsion's strategic importance. Public support shows awareness of engine tech's strategic implications. Aircraft capability depends on engines. Countries without indigenous engines remain dependent on foreign suppliers, facing sanctions and leverage. Hash Fund Kavri Engine highlights experts calling the engine a strategic stepping stone to indigenous power plants. Advocates see Kaveri not standalone, but the foundation for India's long-term aerospace independence. This public engagement coincides with renewed government interest. Officials call Kaveri a strategic path to self-reliance, language suggesting policy recognition beyond its original Tejas application. India's AMCA needs engines producing 110 kilonewtons of thrust, significantly more power than the current Kaveri delivers. This prompts GTRE to plan Kaveri 2.0 inches or seek co-development with international OEMs. Potential partners represent the global elite, Safran, France, General Electric, US, and Rolls-Royce, UK. They bring decades of experience, supply chains, and proven tech, potentially accelerating development by years. But partnerships come with critical conditions. India insists on intellectual property transfer and joint ownership rights. Ensuring collaboration builds indigenous capabilities, not just dependency. This reflects lessons from previous defense partnerships where technology transfer was limited. The AMCA engine timeline targets mid-2030s deployment. This timeframe allows for indigenous or international collaboration, acknowledging complexity and pushing progress. The strategic goal is clear. Independence requires indigenous engines. Whether via evolved Kaveri, partnerships, or hybrid paths, the goal is breaking free from foreign dependencies constraining India for decades. Evaluating Kaveri means looking beyond its Tejas mission. Its true worth is the knowledge ecosystem across India's aerospace and defense base. Materials science developed for Kaveri benefits multiple defense programs. Super alloys, advanced metallurgy, and high-temperature testing support missiles, space vehicles, and industrial turbines. Manufacturing partnerships created a network of specialized suppliers like Godrej Aerospace and Azad Engineering, developing precision capabilities for multiple defense aerospace applications. This infrastructure would have cost far more to build independently. Most importantly, Kaveri created human capital engineers with hands-on turbofan experience now benefiting programs across India's aerospace sector. Testing infrastructure includes engine test facilities, specialized instrumentation, and protocols. This serves current programs and provides the foundation for future engine development. Viewed broadly, Kaveri looks less like a failed program and more like a strategic capability-building exercise that included an ambitious engine goal. Kaveri has matured from a challenging prototype into a strategic foundation. 
With the right funding and global partnership, it can power India's next-gen jets, bringing true Atmanir Bata in aerospace. If you believe in India's tech ambitions, share your thoughts below. And don't forget to like, subscribe and join the conversation.